What is this? A library for ants? What is this? A screwdriver for ants? Who would even use this? <laughs> Who would use this? I would use this. It is a little ridiculous, so it's kind of... It's kind of tiny. That's not what she said. Laser light combos. Pretty neat. Let's talk about this one. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And this week, we are talking about a piece of gear that might improve your shooting experience or just maybe something you're looking for to just have for administrative purposes or if you do things at night. And that is a pistol mounted flashlight. Now this is something that was sent to me. So full disclosure, I'm not being paid for this. This was just sent to me by the company CV Life. They reached out to me, they saw my videos and thought I would do a great job at reviewing their product. This is my initial review on this product. I haven't had a chance to get out to the range to actually shoot it yet, so or shoot with it on the gun because this doesn't shoot. Unless you're talking about some sick-ass lasers. I wish, I wish when you activate the laser, it would, it would lightsaber so bad. And I think there's going to be a future state where we have lightsaber-style bayonets. Hit the thumbs up if you're up for that. Sign me up. For sure when that comes out because that sounds really really cool anyway uh so this is a laser light combo flashlight from cv life it is made in china they are one of those companies that has an amazon store and a website and i figured i'd just give it a try i don't have one like this so figured why not let's take a look at it see what you get when you get one of these talk about uh, the features, what it comes with, and why it might be worth your time and money. So let's jump into it. To give you some context of my background with flashlights, I've only ran two lights ever on my pistols. Uh, one is the Enforce APLC, which has been discontinued, and that was when I ran a Polymer 80, my very first firearm. The second is what I have now, the Streamlight TLR7X. This is on uh, my smaller guns. This is a 500 lumen uh, light, so not very bright, but it is compact. It fits smaller guns, and I think it's smart to have something like this on a smaller gun for two primary reasons. One, this is a carry option. I think it's smart to have a light on a carry. And two, because this is a smaller gun, the added weight on the front end helps with recoil. 500 lumens, uh, I guess, would be checks the box bright enough. Whereas this one claims to be, and we'll just switch it over, uh, 1,500 lumens, so three times as much. So a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see the difference in brightness. So uh, you get a, so you get a pretty good idea of the difference between these two lights and the brightnesses, or the brightnesses and the brightness of the two of them. This one is definitely more of a hot white this is more a soft white color might just because of the lumens but i'm not a electrical lighting expert uh, let's talk about more about this one though this light has a lot of the standard features you'd expect nowadays with a pistol mounted light it has a uh, ambidextrous paddle so one on each side right uh, it has a quick attach function, so some do, some don't. So this has a lever here where you can attach the light to your rail. It attaches to Picatinny rails. The Streamlight has something similar where you have this screw here. You tighten it down, you loosen it up, and when you loosen it up, you can kind of like press it in. Same with this one. Basically, you loosen it up. You can then press it in like that to tighten it in there to your uh, your rail on your pistol, and then you close it with this latch here, right? What this light has, which really piqued my interest when they reached out to me to review the product, is that 
it is rechargeable and I have not dealt with any rechargeable products. You know, there's a, a new optic out there that's rechargeable that I don't want to look into, but there's also this light and other lights like it. So basically when you get this uh, light sent to you in the packaging, you get generic packaging. So we'll talk about that briefly. Um, I always think about when products are being sold, is it appealing on shelf? Now, I know we all care about the contents and the durability and all those things, but thinking from a marketing perspective, if you saw this, would you pick it up? I would not. This just says tactical flashlight. Cool. It says what it is, but it doesn't say much else. I don't know that it's a laser and light combo. I don't know uh, the lumens. I don't know anything about it by just seeing tactical flashlight. It could be anything in here. But uh, when you get this box, you get the light, you get this goodie bag with these uh, tiny tools. This is a flathead that you can use to tighten the screw down here when you want to tighten it down once you've affixed your light to your, your frame. And then it's got this uh, small Allen key, which is used to adjust on the back end the actual laser so you can help it align with your barrel and your optic and all that. So it's, it's centered and, you know, left to right, up, down, all that. And so um, you have two tools there. And again, tools like this are cheaply made. You get no leverage behind them. Not that you need a lot of leverage with this, but I just, it's humorous to me. It looks like it. It belongs for a school of ants. Uh, the last thing you get is this cable, which is USB that connects to a charging source, so a brick, an outlet, what have you. And this magnetic uh, end here, which connects to the bottom of the light. It's already starting to grab it. You can see it there. And that's how you charge the light. Uh, so it's got a rechargeable battery on the inside and does like an indirect contact point, right? So with the rechargeable functionality, they claim on their website, takes about an hour and a half to get a full charge. I don't know if that's on completely dead battery. I didn't get to that point. I just wanted to test out the functionality, make sure it works and works just fine. So again, you know, check in the right direction. What they claim does work, it does recharge. Now, how bright is the light, 1500 lumens? I don't have any scientific tools to test that, but I did go out in my neighborhood just from my front door of my house and shine the light, shine the laser just to see what it looked and felt like in hand. So I kind of use it as an administrative light. I wasn't waving a gun around and, you know, muzzling people out there. Um, but I, I will say I was pleasantly impressed with the distance in which this thing shines. I mean, it'll get out there. It'll definitely, uh, it'll definitely blind your threat for sure. And I think that's the point is that you, you this is a, as I say, tactical flashlight. So puts it you in an advantage when you use it. And they also have a ton of warnings on this box about not flashing a light in someone's eye or the laser in someone's eye. And of course, you know, if it's a threat, you're going to want to, you're going to want to do that anyway. Um, I tested out multiple functions. You'll see in the footage here about the brightness, the laser, the laser and the light combo, how quick and easy it is to pick up the laser with the light. I do think depending on your environment and setting the laser light combo, kind of is pointless because the light itself is so bright it kind of blows out the laser but overall i think you know pretty decent for what it what they offer another feature that they have here is an adjustable mounting uh piece here so in the middle here you can adjust this little component right here up and down it goes and you can use that to adjust where you want to attach to your your uh firearm so if i wanted to attach it on the echelon here, or if I wanted to leave it where it's at, but put it on the front rail, I could and not have to adjust the depth of the gun, or I'm sorry, the depth of the light on the gun. If I push it, you know, here, it all applies. I'm not sure how stable this mounting is because it's pretty flimsy just moving around. And when I put it in the rail, it'll move. So that'll be a future test. And so we're going to go ahead and put this on. Whoopsie, there we go. We went ahead and closed the lever. It's on there pretty snug, a little bit of wobble. Um, I think the next thing I'd have to do is get some range time behind it, practice manipulating it, and then um, seeing how long it lasts with recoil. You know, if this screw works, if this latching um, arm, I mean, it's, it's on there pretty snug. I'll say that right now. I latched it down pretty easily and it feels really tight, but I'm curious with recoil, 
how well it does. The other thing that I wanted to make sure I point out is how you can manipulate the different functions of the light. So on the very bottom of the light, so if this is the top of the light, on the bottom you have these controls here that you can select and they indicate laser, laser light, and light only. So you got your light, you got your strobe function, you've got your laser, and then you've got your laser light combo. And it's kind of hard to pick up. I don't know if you can see it on my hand there. You may not be able to pick it up. There you go, a little bit. But I already feel the heat off of that. And my eyes are a little blurred from that. So this is bright. Um, let's talk about some of the cons that I found just up front with this. Because it's got a lot of good things going for it. All right, so quickly the cons for this because I haven't done a lot of testing with it so I really can't prove if this is good or bad so I won't be able to give you a complete assessment that'll be at a later video when I actually do some range footage and test it and maybe drop test it but uh, I do know a lot of flashlights have a lot of different warnings on them and I also know as a cell phone user that has a flashlight on it uh, they mentioned don't have the light on too long and don't have it on a surface for too long so you can see, I'm I was very concerned how long I could do this, and I'm not going to do it for too long because I don't want to cause a fire in my home and on the video. But I do have concerns about the amount of heat that this thing gives off because I just did that for a few seconds, and this box already has heat on it. The same would go with the laser. Again, I got the laser going here. I'm concerned and curious how long that would be on before I have an incident. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the regulation on this stuff. Yeah, that's, that's hot too. Um, the front end of the light feels hot. I think that's standard for a lot of different lights. In the comments, if you have experience with lights, let me know. This is a new um, area for me and I'm looking to expand my knowledge on different types of gear. But there's a lot of warnings on here about uh, don't cover the light head when the flashlight is on or place the flashlight on the ground. Uh, the radiation energy of the flashlight may cause damage to the flashlight itself or even result in burning to other materials. Seems pretty serious. Uh, do not leave the light in any type of fabric, bag, or fusible plastic container since the high temperature. So, so what does that mean? Because if I'm transporting, it's got to be inside of something. Um, I'm guessing theoretically it would just be don't do that when it's on. I'm not sure. Again, there's not a whole lot of information on this. Um, on this, There's a lot of stuff on the website on Amazon. And I'll just mention briefly, they've got over 200 and something reviews. And it's got a four and a half star out of five rating in the positive on Amazon. Um, so take a look at the Amazon reviews. There's a lot of people that are, have some feedback for it and it seems to be pretty positive. Speaking of Amazon, uh, let's talk about price. Uh, this light, laser light combo is less than $60. With that price point on Amazon, you kind of get an idea of the level of quality you're getting with this. I haven't dropped tested this yet. They say they've done a meter and a half. So what is that? Uh, five feet or so? I don't know. My math is not good. Uh, so a meter and a half drop test. To me, that seems okay, but I don't feel like that's substantial, um, especially considering if you're going to have it on an outside the waistband rig or if it's in a bag or something and it falls out you hopefully you have a good retention holster but if you did bang it into something by walking around you'd want to know if it's going to last but again would you consider this duty grade given the materials given the limited information you have and the price point price doesn't always mean bad quality when it's lower price and doesn't mean high quality when it's higher price but something to think about uh you know, it, I would definitely want to put more time behind it to give it a true assessment. But I think, you know, less than $60 is, is okay to try something. And the other thing you can always do is if you don't like it, if you get it through Amazon, you can submit a return and Amazon has a return policy that should work no problem. So there's a lot of good things with this, with this light, right? I think the only other con I can think of right now is holster compatibility. This is not an industry known brand and commonly used light. So a lot of your major holster manufacturers probably won't have a light uh, or have a holster compatible with this light. 
you know, you've got your stream lights, your O lights. Um, I'm sure there are a few others that are out there that are pretty common, right? Uh, there's like, I think there's like a half dozen pretty common light options. You got cloud defensive as well. I know we like shooting those guys, talk about them all the time and Brownells sells them. So I might check them out in the near future. So there isn't even a uh, like model or a type for this. I just know that this is the 1500 lumen laser light combo, right? So I think that the first thing I would tell CV Life is give it a name, name your products. I feel like that makes sense across the board, even if it's just like the cars now that are like Q5 or you know M3 or X2. Give it a name so that people know if they like it where to get it. Um, I think the other thing that I have a concern about is rechargeable batteries. I see the pros is that you just put it on a charger and you're good to go. The con is that not all of my optics and lights use rechargeable batteries. And I like to have things streamlined. So if I could get a bunch of the same batteries for my accessories, that would be great. And I can streamline my efforts. This being a rechargeable type of battery doesn't lend itself uh, for me to be an early adopter. Now, this might be just the first step for many other companies to do rechargeable batteries, whether it's optics or lights or um, you know, you got cloud defensive with dual fuel, which it runs off of two different battery types so they can help conserve power and, you know, utilize the batteries to the best abilities to be more efficient. So that's another concern of mine. So holster compatibility and, and, and you know, ability to use holster. I don't have one that works for this. This this looks like an X300 pretty much, but it's got some differences. So it won't fit an X300 holster. I, I tried one out the other day. Um, and then lifespan of battery i've got a concern there take that for for what you will you know with a grain of salt or pinch of sugar whatever you want to take it with um whiskey i don't care but that's those are my first concerns is that i don't know what it's called i don't know how long the battery is going to last long term health wise and i can't put it in a holster unless i send it off to someone and get a custom one made so those are the first you know concerns i might have so that concludes this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it and you know learned something from me and have some new perspective on lights, laser lights, and all that. Uh, this is one of those areas that is new to me, so I don't have a lot of experience where I can talk about recommendations for. So in the comment section down below is where you all be really helpful for me. Let me know. Have you used this before? If you have, tell me your experience. If you have other light recommendations that you highly endorse, please let me know what they are and drop in the comment section and tell me why. Don't just say, I like this one. Why do you like it? Where did you get it? What have you used it for? What's your application? I will say openly, I am looking to get a light for my AR because it's running good now. Now I want to you know, add more accessories to it to make it more complete. So I want to get a light and a pressure pad for it and make sure that it's usable, not just in the day, but at night and some more things like that. So in the comments, help me out guys. What do you think? Is it a cop? Is it a drop? Is it a win? Is it a lose? And what do you like to run for lights and lasers? Are laser lights even necessary? I don't know. I just, I still wish this was a lightsaber. If you want to see more videos from me, consider subscribing. We're at over 2,500 subscribers at the time of posting this video. And man, it's been crazy. We're just been growing. Seems like daily. Thank you all for joining me this week and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.